You are listening to the Hello Sport Podcast. Punters and dribblers, mums and daddies, welcome back to another All Talk with Tom and Eddie, Hello Sport Podcast. You know the drill. Um, listen, this is coming out on a Sunday night. You may not be listening to it on a Sunday night, but if you are, it's a Sunday. You know, daylight savings is on, but you've just seen the podcast drop. You're like, I know what I'm doing once I, you know, cook dinner have a shower, get them a PJs, I'm going to snuggle up into bed. Correct. And I'm going to listen to Tom and Eddie have a yarn with the great and powerful Tim Zoot. Now, you may also go, I've got a fuckload of chores tonight, I've got to cook dinner, I've got to clean the house, I've got to do the dishes. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to fucking pop Tom and Eddie and Timmy Zoo in the ears and just listen to them dribbling yarn. And I'm here to tell you that you are in for one of the great treats of a lifetime. Mm-hmm. Tim Zoot is one of the great Australians living, there I said it, He's also got fuckloads about him and was dripping, dripping in charisma and just oozing out for energy, Tom. Is that fair to say? He rolled in here, dressed to the nines, but not like I'm trying to dress to the nines. It was like I've come in here and I'm just looking cool as fuck, but I'm not trying to. Some people will come in here and it's like they're wearing a top hat and coat and it's like, Woo the fuck up, dude. It's just a podcast. Relax. Tim was coming in just like, yo, I'm cool as shit. Drop, rocking into my fucking Merc. Park it out the front. No one who comes in here gets a park out the front because there is no way of finding parks on there. Not Tim Zoo, bro. Unless your name's Tim Zoo. Tim we go, Zoo where'd you park? In. He goes, out the front. We go, no one gets those parks. He goes, well, I do. I did. Yeah. Now, Tim's fighting Brian Mendoza on October 15th in the Gold Coast, I believe. Uh, available on main event. Pay per view via KO, I assume. Uh, and he is now the official WBO world champion. The second that dog Charlo stepped in the dog. ring with Canelo and got, Who got flogged. He got flogged. Timmy became the out and out champion. Um, and he defends that belt October 15 in the Gold Coast. So please enjoy our good friend, Tim Zoo. Behind there is like, so we do a betting show, which uh, was like, so we had like a bunch of those couches that was just all for the betting show. Bro, they're so comfortable. They're so eh? comfortable, but they, they made you <laughs> like that's almost. Why we, that's why they're bad for, <laughs> for the betting, betting show, show. Where you need to be like up and sort yeah, of yeah. like, yeah, yeah. so we were like, fuck Combative. this, we can't. So now like the rest of them are a just sitting in the show. garage. Yeah, like sports betting. Oh, right. Yeah. Do you think I was saying betting? No, I was just I was <laughs> Yeah, 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 right. Betting show. So, yeah, yeah so yeah. like we basically just, it's just rugby league sports betting. Oh, right. Yeah, so yeah. we're basically like, it's me, him, and another guy, and we sort of take each other on and just sort of, but those chairs made you fucking almost put you to sleep when you're trying to. <laughs> yeah, I feel real so, cool. <laughs> It's part of a six-piece modular, mate. It's yeah, got right. like a little fucking radio and shit. No like way. A cassette player in the corner. Yeah. Which we've, to be fair, because now we don't need them, have been trying to sell. So if you're in the, look, if you really like it, we oh, can I have it. I don't know where to put it at home. <laughs> We'll give you a good prize, <laughs> <laughs> not a great prize though, because we no, 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 not a great prize. Listen, it'll be a, it'll be competitively priced. <laughs> yeah, like it'll be like a mates rate sort of. Yeah, thing. but we'll be we'll, we'll like still, a respect sort of I mean, prize. People have, have sat on it, man. Well, <laughs> well it's vintage, yeah, mate. It's so it's I can't give you a number. Yeah. Fuck loads, like, <laughs> more than we've had. But in that chair, there's some there's been some there's been some some, some interesting people. We just had Mark Boris in here today. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So he just uh, he was in this morning, which was cool. He's just a weapon, you know. I've been on his um. On his podcast. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. Do you go on many podcasts? Like, it's sort of the, the thing you do now, right? Like, I mean. Um, I've been on a few. Um, do you enjoy it? Like, do you? Because I know it's obviously yeah, it's vastly ch- different it's from chill, the media. It's just like a normal conversation. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You know, and, and like, let's say when you're on like Fox, the questions are completely different there. They just ask the most, the most just how do you feel? Generic. Yeah. Yeah, how yeah. are you training? How are you going? How are yeah. you training, yeah. Matt? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> doesn't give you much to work prep, with, really, does it? is good, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Shit, well, you, know? we, I mean, you must get <laughs> sick to death of answering those questions in a lead up to a fight. Because they'll all be the same yeah, all the time. Yeah, it's the same. Yeah, it's the same. You just have to remember the same answer and, <laughs> just, and stick just with it. Zone, yeah, go yeah, fly yeah. through them all. I remember I, did, I went to a press conference, same question over and over and over again. That's sometimes, yeah, you're getting asked the same question by the same, like, report multiple people yeah, in the yeah. same room and you're like yeah, how yeah. many fucking times yeah. how many different ways can i give yeah, you the yeah. same answer yeah, yeah. must do your fucking head in <laughs> on that note how you training how you doing <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good, we man. wanted to, i wanted to ask you about that water bottle because we saw you there that's a that's a motherfucker but uh, is that all you need to drink in one day no nah, man this is this is um i drink three of these in in one day that makes me feel better i was looking at we we're looking at the time on it i was like surely you gotta be pounding more than that <laughs> yeah yeah no nah, three three of these so Rough, 
roughly I'm doing six liters a day. Jesus, are you pissing a lot? Uh, non-stop. Okay, at any point we stop as well. If you need to piss, let us know. No, nah, it's all good. I, can I hold, do, though. I, I can can't, hold, I can't hold it. He can't it. even get through it. Oh, no. He's had a coffee in like half a <laughs> like bottle of water. one of these a day. Yeah, right. <laughs> so no, you just I'm, get good I'm at good. it. Yeah, I'm good. It's fucking hell. On the plane bar, I'm, I'm pretty bad age. Yeah. Non-stop in the toilet. Back and forth, back and <laughs> forth, forth, back and forth. Every, every 30 minutes. And how much of that, I mean, I imagine there's a lot of work that you've got to be, a, a lot you've got to be on top of nutrition wise health wise yeah. generally and is that are you trying to do that all the time or is it just when you're coming into a camp oh, man it used to be when i come into a camp but now i've sort of just created it as a, like as, as a lifestyle yeah i've got my own uh like full-time chef mm. hectic yeah so that's just made my life so much every every things, meal yeah. Yeah, so breakfast, oh. lunch, and dinner. And are you like, I feel, see, when I think of full-time chef, I'm like, pancakes today. Like, do you <laughs> just, does he just, like, you don't even need to think about it? Do you go like, I actually kind of feel like this? Or is it yeah, like, yeah. just eat this? No, sometimes we go to the shops and I'll, I'll pick out exactly what I want. Um, and then he just makes a meal from that. Whips it up. Yeah, and yeah. is he dropping you, is it like he just drops you down like a week's worth of food? Is he living in your no, house? No, no, so he comes in the morning, he's got like a morning shift, and then he comes <laughs> in, the, yeah, dude. in the evening. Sort of. That's hectic. Yeah, you, yeah. You, you'd like to have him there sort of like late at night, you know what I mean? Like yeah, midnight absolutely. Snacks <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah up, getting got, up out of bed. I get plenty of like the, the night snacks as well, but he makes everything healthy, you know? And it's a, it's such a big difference in my life. I bet it is, man. Yeah. I bet it is. Yeah. When did that, when did, when did you start getting that level? Because that's this like, year, this oh, just year. this year? Yeah. That's like another level of like yeah. professionalism and like yeah. being able to sort of get all of the shit you yeah. need in, right? Yeah. Well, I, when I went to America, I brought him along and um, that's where it all started. And since then, me, me and Omar, we've, we've got a, like a great relationship, first of all. Yeah. And man, it's, it's just, I come back from training and I've got food there. That's so the time good. the time that I spend is is that's what it's, that's what it's worth for me. Yeah. How do you find a personal chef? Like, are you on Gumtree or like? How do you? <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? Facebook I, Marketplace. Like, where, how do you find <laughs> someone? No, nah, the story was we. I used to be sponsored by a uh, by a cafe. Yeah. And uh, we we used to I used to always go in there, and then I got a relationship with the with the chef there, and then uh, one thing led to the other, and he wanted to go his way and, and I, I needed that way as well. So yeah, so the roads, the roads aligned and, yeah. and, and it worked so well with each other. Do you feel like, were you looking for one or did you, or was that the next logical step to, to start looking after yourself with that yeah. sort of intent? Is that like what world champions do? Is that, was, was that your mindset? Yeah, I feel like, to, I think for me, it was more about the, like the reliability. Yeah. Just to have everything, everything done everything there like mm. even i look up like cristiano ronaldo and the stuff that he yeah. does you know it's like the recovery the the massages he goes through the ice baths the food the nutrition it all plays a big part mm. and um for myself that's it that's the only thing that i can work on and getting that to be 100 percent. and and when i when i got the chef i was able to yeah I don't blow out now anymore. You know? <laughs> yeah, I used to be blow out, and it used to be hard. You know, oh, should I go here to eat or should I go there to eat? But now it's just everything's at home. Do you? Let's say you don't have the chef. Do you know what you should be eating? Like, mm. are you like, okay, this is bad for me? We're constantly we're we, we don't know. We're in a constant <laughs> state of like trying to get jacked, and we're never really there. But like, you know, we were here the other very night. Very generous about <laughs> never really there. I <laughs> well, we're near fucking enough. ages away. But that's why I'm wearing such a big fat jumper. But like, <laughs> the other night we were going somewhere, and we were like, oh, we'll just grab something. We'll get some food in here before we uh, before we leave the studio. And we we're like, fuck, what's healthy? I don't know. And we we're like, this looks healthy. Fuck it, we'll get it. But then like, we don't know what sources are bad. Like. Are you you're you're pretty sweet with all that sort of stuff? Yeah, I know I know my stuff. You know what's now. up. Yeah, you know what's <laughs> yeah. up. My stuff now. Well, like I know you know, but in terms of whether you still would be, I guess, seeking that advice that you might have the chef, but like you might have to go, hey man, like what's no, this? No, I'm I'm constantly learning. Like yeah. I'm doing this new thing where I'm eating my my veggies first. Okay. Just the way I'm eating my order. So I eat my veggies first, and then I eat my proteins, and then I'll have my carbs and fats um, right at the end. And really and what's the just, thinking behind that it's it's uh the way your digestive system works right. and the way you should be um having the food in that in that particular order and in all honesty i did it for three weeks and i was already losing weight like that really that quickly just by the way of the way of eating eating in that order interesting yeah just just that way 
And so wow. are you obsessive in that sense in terms of trying to find like improvements that you can the always- The one yeah. yeah. Back in the days, I used to do everything different, not properly, you know? But now, now that I know my body, I, I understand more about the sport. Mm. It's the one percenters now. The it's the ones yeah. that count. Are you way more in tune with your body when you're slightly off? I feel like you and I probably exist in a state of being off, and we <laughs> notice when we're maybe feeling good. <laughs> you know? No, you know why? It's funny. Like if I have an hour under of what I usually sleep, I could feel it for the whole day. Really? Yeah. So it's. Everything, I don't know, everything's just got to be perfectly aligned. Yeah. Cherry you right. And when you have a lot of um, different responsibilities and, and stuff that you have to do, um, you have to try and, I don't know, balance it all out. Do you find it hard to, to maintain uh, consistency or a routine in a, the chaotic environment of like a, a fight week? No, not really. I, 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 actually, I actually enjoy fight week. Right. Because um, training gets minimized and the easy part is actually just doing an interview and mm. and doing what, all that stuff mm. the hard part is actually the grind just that non-stop like f feeling like shit in the morning when you when you've done a crazy crazy session mm. um and just going through that and just the the training that you go through it's it's yeah. it's hard it's not easy yeah you know yeah and that's much much harder than than fight week fight week is yeah, you see, the cameras fight come week. out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wouldn't say I love it because I love the f I love the part of fighting. Yeah, but fight week you you struggle as well because you have to make weight, and 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 that's how much are you like, having to lose on fight week to make weight? Um, quite a bit actually. Really? Yeah, quite a bit. Usually around five, five, six kilos. Fuck. And are you lo are you losing it that week generally? Yeah. yeah. So you you put your body fat percentage as low as possible. Mm -hmm. Um throughout camp so yep. the eight weeks leading in you try to lose as much as you can for that eight, eight weeks and then the last week it's it's basically just that water mm. salt retention uh fiber intake you completely drop yeah basically having a little bit of protein a little bit of fats and yeah you you weigh in at 69.8 which i which is my weight limit and then afterwards let's say a couple hours after i'd be 75 that's Four hours wild. after that, I'd be around seventy-eight. That night, I'll be eighty kilos. Wow! <laughs> wow. Ten kilos. Ten and kilos. Is that, is that, that is that just rehydration? Rehydration, food, yeah. everything, all the carbs just basically uh, suck into your body, and it's crazy to see the difference. You know, Isn't like that fucking wild? the way from the weigh-in to twenty-four hours after, you you're. A, Completely different person. You see by the face. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Can. Your you face can. is completely sucked in. The like way in. Yeah, yeah. Conor, Conor McGregor when he was making weight at featherweight, he was like, yeah, he, yeah. Looks sick. he looked like Skeleton. he was dead. I remember yeah. seeing a photo, like not seeing that way in. There's a particular one where he was like fucked, and just saw a photo of it, and I was like, holy shit, dude, he yeah. looks like he's seriously dying. Mm. <laughs> is it? Is there a part of that that's a bit like? Because a lot of people say it's unnecessary. Like, just fight at the weight you're at. Do you? Do you know, like not necessarily the weight you're at? But you know, there's maybe a more healthy way of doing it where you're not having to suck down and completely deplete your body to get down to. Like, do you think that that's reasonable, or are you comfortable with the? the I'm not process? comfortable doing it. Yeah, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping to move up. Yeah. sometime. Uh, I've set up set goals my, for myself in this weight division. Yeah. Mm. Once I'm done and I've completed my task, get the fuck out. And I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm not gonna sit in the sauna for two hours. Let's just say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah makes sense that makes complete sense yeah. with the uh, your I, I find it interesting in the like progression of uh, anyone's career in boxing but obviously we've all been watching you for a long time and like there's obviously the one percenters that you talk about but when it comes to the actual skill set of boxing the like the fact that there are still like improvements to be made mm. when you to the fucking lame like you're obviously so accomplished and actualized in what you're doing like what are the things that you're trying to do from a technique perspective speed perspective power perspective that you're to try and improve when you're already at the top every day it's something different every day like i'm going through now a phase where working a lot on defense um for the last maybe year or so just head movement catching shots being able to to see to see the punches and uh be able to just uh flow mm. that's the word flow mm. um and uh back in the days it used to be just hard grind just outwork your opponent but now it's just 
style is completely changing. Uh, you're learning more. Your style's constantly evolving. Mm. Uh, there'd be round, there'd be a let's let's say Mondays. I'm just working on power. Right. Just just seeing how hard I can hit, and just constantly nonstop, just bam, bam. And is there something bam. measuring that? Like is that you know this no, year say like hardest hit you ever seen? Well, seen. that's right in Francis Garno, Garno yeah. sort of Oh shit. really? No, I'm not I'm not really into too much of that science stuff. You know, just yep. keep it real old school. You yep. know, mm. just keep it quite just simple. hit us hit something hard. Yeah, just hit something hard. <laughs> My <laughs> coach feels it. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the best measurement. Is that yeah. hard? Yeah, I was fucking. Hard. Yeah, you get you get punters like us in there to wear the money. Yeah, that was hard. Yeah, that was real hard. Piss and blood. That's hard. Yeah, that's real hard. Have you? Do you look back at like the way that you used to fight even a couple of years ago and sort of like what's your opinion on that fight? Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, like big progressions. Yeah. Uh, but not just progression, but I see like I, I couldn't believe at times I used to think to fight in that certain way. Yes. Um now yeah, it's just completely changed, you know, like I I could be much more efficient in different ways. Are you happy with the the pro, like your the progression you've had though, or like or are there things we look back and you go, oh geez, I wish I'd done this differently earlier or no, gone down this path you earlier? Are you happy with because because you sometimes with with progression, of course, you're going to have a lot of failure in the inside the inside training for sure. You know, there's going to be times where it's going to be really really tough, and I went through those days during training, so um, I'm glad I was able to experience. Uh, the, the the hard days, even though the hard days are all still ahead of me. Mm. Um, like the, I remember coming, I remember I used to always get caught with uppercuts for, for like a year and a half. I used to be like, always get caught with uppercuts. My jaw was just constantly sore. <laughs> I was fighting, I was like, man, I hope I don't get hit too much in the jaw. Cause I can, can barely bite on my food right now. <laughs> but uh, um, I went through it and now uppercut comes, it sort of just goes boom. Like that, just sort of just, just block it, just instinct. Yeah. yeah. You know? But if I didn't go through that year and a half of getting smacked in the, <laughs> in the jaw nonstop, <laughs> I wouldn't have learned, you know? Yeah. So um, everything's a lesson. Do you learn more from the fight or from the, like, I guess, like lessons from fighting or like in the training camps? I think the, the lesson from the fight you learn is presented to everyone. Um, but in training, it's more. Yeah, you learn more in training because this happens nonstop, you know? Yeah. You have one fight, what, 30 minutes, and then one 30-minute session is, is just one day yeah. in the in the, ring, sure. uh, in the gym. It's just not as much pressure, I guess. Like how often would you spar a week? I used to spar three times a week. Yeah. Uh, now I'm more two, let yeah. my body uh, rest and recover as well. So you put like that's twice a week, every week. Yeah, you know, and you I do 12, 10 rounds and I do uh, like my rounds are much longer. I do three and a half, four minute rounds. Uh, so yeah, I just feel comfortable in there. I don't get tired anymore. Really? Yeah. It's, it's I've always, <laughs> yeah, fuck. I've always, I've always marveled at boxers cardio. Like it's absolutely yeah. ridiculous. Mm. Are you... What sort of what? But you know what? If if you go make me swim fifty meters, yeah, I'm finished. <laughs> really? It's yeah. just, so it's all Darn. specific. Yeah, it's yeah. all specific yeah, training. Yeah. If I go try to do swimming, like that's the one thing. I can I go. I can go run twenty k's. Yeah. I can go do 20, 20 rounds on the on yeah. the bag with twenty rounds of sparring. If you give me put me in the pool, yeah. Struggle. Very similar, you and I, mate. Yeah, I, yeah really he almost drowned. <laughs> he almost drowned at Clavelli. It was just like swimming halfway out. I'd go and save yeah, it. Yeah, like, mate, it's 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 flip a coin if I could swim 50 metres unassisted. <laughs> yeah, it's flip yeah. a coin and stuff. But I could do 20K, so yeah. Yeah, you can run. We're similar. Yeah. I can't box, though. No, you can't, no, you can't box. <laughs> Neither can I. Punters and dribblers, mums and daddies. Haven't been a punter till you've been a net. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed it, punters and dribblers. And just like any nailed that, Ned's nailed the betting game. The best fucking app, the best platform out there. We uh, couldn't love him more, if I'm going to be honest. No, best in class. Yep. Absolute best in class. Like my sinning. Yeah. Best in class. Like the Panthers, best in class. Ned's best in class. class. Um, I got into the old uh, 
so there's a new thing on the Neds app, right? Which is like profiles where you can share. So there's the group which we're in, which is the Ned about even Neds group secret passcode is Dribbler. But then there's now profiles where you can sort of like go and see how you've been betting. So in the group, obviously it's like you could troll back like six months and see every single bet you've put in there. But this way you can actually just see on your profile like – and you can share which ones you want and everything, but you can sort of follow along different mm. people. Mm. I The first one I shared, bang, winner. Next four, not as good. But it was nice to get off there with a winner. And I was sharing them into the group as well. Bit of fucking flexing. I don't think I've had any wins in there. Oh, I got Clive Churchill, Nathan Cleary. But otherwise, <laughs> nothing. Have you share, Have you set up your profile I yet? Have. Yeah, profile's have. good fun. Uh, so anyway, get to the Neds app. You can join the About Even group. You can build your own profiles, follow on in our profiles. Profiles. Um, you love a profile here, Love a profile. But there's ponies coming up now, dude. Every Ooh, Saturday. It's pony season. Pony town. Pony season. Um Pony season. You can do all that on the Neds app. Shout out to Neds. Chances are you're about to lose. For free and confidential support, call the number on screen or visit the website. There was a fight, the, not the not Tony Harrison. Was it the one just before Tony where you got dropped by that American in the first round? Yeah. What's his name again? Terrell. 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 What's that like where, because, I mean, that's what we're like – are you thinking, holy fuck? Like it was quite a solid one, but you, what was amazing was that you came back and mm. just gritted it out, right? Yeah, Which yeah. I imagine would be quite uh, satisfying. What's it like though in that moment where like you're sort of confronted by the like potential end of everything you've been working for within reason? Um, I was cold at the time. You came out cold? Yeah, I was Why cold. is that? Just probably didn't get a good warm up. Uh, everything was a bit different during mm. that that whole prep. I was real sick as well. Um, no excuses, but yeah, um, it was a weird feeling because I, I remember as soon as I, I dropped, I was like, "Fuck, how did that happen, man?" It was just like a little flash. Yeah, I was not hurt. My legs were sweet. Everything was good. I've never I've never been hurt. Touch wood. Um, <laughs> touch wood. Yeah, yeah, touch yeah, wood. Yeah. <laughs> um, never been hurt. So I didn't. As soon as I got up, I'm like, "All right." This is round one, and I'm behind. Yeah, and I'm all the way in America. I'm a long way from home. Yeah, I, I need to get my shit together now. I okay, go now. Now it's on. Mm. It was a little wake up call that I needed. Yeah, which sort of worked in in my favor because afterwards I just I went all out. Yeah, you went for yeah, it. Yeah, just like a switch. Did I learned I needed to turn that switch on before, before the, fight. the fight. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. not in round one, but yeah. before the fight. Are you? Was that? <laughs> Was that a fuck up? Like, was that your fuck up getting yeah. caught like that? Yeah. Yeah, it was just a simple thing, man. I threw the right. My left hand was uh, a bit lower. Uh, I shouldn't have thrown the right um, at all. Just needed to be, yeah, again, switched on. And then when I went to the Tony Harrison fight, I was switched on from the from the dressing room. Mm. I could feel it. Like, I could feel the energy. I could feel everything. Mm. I was just zoned we in. We were at that fight. That we were. Yeah, it was sick. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that it was, was sick. That was a different feel for me. Really enjoyable. Yeah. yeah. I think um, I thrive on the the energy around. Mm. Mm. So as soon as I feel the energy, I, I sort of thrive it all in. Mate, people were frothing in there. It was great. Yeah, yeah it was. A- Are you – how long into the fight until you feel like generally you've got your opponent – more or less figured out. You know what? Um, I can figure someone out in the first round. Really? Yeah. And I can sort of see how which way it's going to go and what um, what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do it methodically. Really? Yeah. You just, you're just sort of yeah. collecting data, as they that's, say. That's what it is, yeah. 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 And is there, is there some of that that – is like you have also been studying them beforehand. So you're aware of like things that they do. And then when you're in there, you're like, okay, I'm sort of aware of how this guy goes. No, not really. Is it mainly just really once look. you're in there? Yeah, I don't, really, I don't really watch my opponents. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, do your really. trainers watch them? Yeah, they like, And then they'll just try and they'll sort of coach you in the right direction yeah. for things they think you need to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't really watch it. I've just got no interest in, in, in them. Like I, I know like what they're good at. Yeah. I've watched a, a, a few fights, but I don't sit there, study crazy. Um, I feel like once you get in the ring and you've got a certain plan and that plan doesn't go ahead, you sort of panic. You sort of have to be able to to learn on the go. Yeah. And for me, it's it's not what they bring, but it's what I'm going to bring to mm. them. 
that yeah. they have to watch out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's you, the mentality, right? Do you go into fights with like with game plans or is it, or is it more to what you're saying now that you try and – you go with maybe a rough plan but you, you're building the plan mm. as you go? Yeah, you come in with a rough plan yeah, and then just sort of – Goes out the window and you see what happens. Yeah, you just write your book from there. Yeah. <laughs> is that like – are you – can you try to explain or describe what that feeling's like? Is it sort of like it just – you just – you all, you know what to do without thinking about it super or you th putting thought into it? Superman, superhuman. So yeah. You have, to, you have to sort of get yourself into that sort of a – well, look, state boxers we're like we're we're natural born killers mm. Mm. and to be able to to be able to put it on another boxer who's a natural born killer and put it on him you feel like superman yeah yeah you know you actually feel you like did. superhuman and yeah. to be doing it in in certain ways and to be doing it at that top level now yeah it's it's a, it's a crazy feeling, and I think like that's what's knocking most someone out again. I have no desire to do it, uh, but <laughs> I mate, like watching it. I like I love watching it happen. But <laughs> I imagine, as to your point, feel like where you are both at the tippity top, and then being able to fucking like the way you knocked out Tony Harrison. Yeah. And he talked a lot of shit. Yeah, yeah. And he was super confident. <laughs> yeah, super, super confident. Super confident. Yeah. Super confident. Like, I, we always believed in you, but he like, sometimes when they speak with such confidence, you're, you're like, like, fuck, is this And I didn't guy? really know. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know who he was. And I'm like, who's this super confident <laughs> motherfucker coming <laughs> yeah. here? Like, Jesus Christ. And he's like, mate, he should have just waited for Charlo. Yeah, like, yeah. he's going to regret that decision. I'm like, God, <laughs> like, he seems really confident, this guy. In that finishing sequence, and you can see that it's all coming, like, are you still trying to stay calm, but are you yeah. also, like, filled with adrenaline? Like, I'm oh, going to fucking go and do it adrenaline's now. crazy, yeah. <laughs> adrenaline's crazy. In in training, it's different because the adrenaline's not as much there. Mm. It's still there, but it's not as much. But when you're in a fight and you see, I guess when you see red, it's it's hard to, to control yourself. Even in my last one against yeah. the Campo, mm. I remember as soon as I hit him with the first right, um, I was like, red. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was like, yeah. oh, man, I've got to knock this <laughs> fucker out now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. In the like, ne next 30 seconds. And then as soon as I s got over my swinging stage, I was like, all right, he's not going down that easy. <laughs> yeah. I've got to be smarter about this. Yeah. And then I just landed a, uh, like a, just a smart little move, just a – Simple one too. Mm. That's, that's that's all I was. And that one was later. was that kind of shocking. That one, how quickly that one finished the Ocampo one. Like, yeah, Ran I was on. I was yeah, like, yeah. what the? F I was watching it. Uh, I was actually with my wife and children. I just nipped around the corner quick. I was like, I'm just gonna go and fucking. <laughs> but I was like, holy shit! It was like inside two minutes or something. Yeah, yeah. That must have taken you by surprise to some degree, right? Or are you like confident you're gonna knock someone out? <sighs> I knew he was gonna be easy to hit. Um. I knew he was going to be easy to hit, but I didn't think that it was going to come that that early. quickly. Yeah, and the Mexicans they're tough, mm. Mm. so I didn't think that. I thought he's going to keep going. Yeah. Mm. Are you? What's it like after a fight, especially with these most recent ones where it's more high profile and there's a bit more shit talking? But like, do you go and see the guys after? Will you go and like talk to them afterwards, or is you it like what? as soon as I get to the MMA yeah, shit, it's, like, it's hard because as soon as you get back to the dressing room. Um, you get changed and all these people come along. And yeah. You're like, uh, <laughs> take 200 photos there. And yeah, then you go yeah. to do your press conference. Once the press conference is over, you don't even have time to see your opponent and they're, and they're gone. Mm. I wish sort of sometimes there's a close in the dressing room and you, you get to actually um, talk to them and shake their hand. But the last, the last few fights I haven't been able to. Mm. Too busy. Because I think I even yeah, saw the camper, like your mum went into the sheds yeah. and was like, that's mom, pretty cool. My mum feels it. My yeah, mum feels for the opponents, yeah. especially after the fight. It's, it's, you know, it's it's a hard feeling because one person's on the biggest high while the other person's on, on the lowest of the lowest, yeah. you know, so it's, we're all human at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah. How do you manage the family thing on a fight day? I think I think it might have been the Tony Harris Tony Harrison. Tony Harrison one there where we were sitting near your family and I could you could just see, right? Yeah. Like you can see the way a family member, especially your mum's just like, you know, fucking wigging out and Nikita yeah. was fighting as well. Yeah. How do you manage that? Like are you talking to them or are you kind of just like, I can't, I need to sort well, of be you know separate what? from family on My fight? My mum used to be real crazy. <laughs> then I had to pull her up I showed her a clip of what she does <laughs> and, she, and she sort of slowed mellowed down she sort of sits there just like closes Stressing her eyes out. she came into the um, into the gym once and watched me spar the, maybe a couple 
weeks ago and she's like no nah, i can't do this it's too brutal yeah yeah it's too brutal you know like it's not every day or every day people see what we have to go through yeah um and it's of course hard for a family member I, my sister's crazy we are, we're right next we're, to your sister yeah. well, just, can you hear her during a fight no i can't that's crazy you can't you really yeah my sister's crazy because we, we were quite close we're quite close to your sister she yeah. was she was yeah, going pumped up. up yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. She's ready to punch on anyone. Yeah, 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 <laughs> Literally, yeah. I'm, I'm just mate. hoping that I don't get the call. And she's like, I want to fight. <laughs> That's game over. Uh, my missus, she's all right, a bit better. She gets emotional as well. Yeah. Um, grandpa's good. Everyone sort of yeah, knows the guy. Yeah. And will you check in with your old man every fight? Like, are you, well, that, is that something where you will, like, you know, fight day or even just generally, like, it, for, sort of advice around that sort of stuff or is it pretty yeah, separate? We, we sort of talk beforehand a little bit just on game plan. He always talks about game plans. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, but during fight day and fight, uh, just after the way, you know, I turn my phone off. Yeah. yeah. So I completely zone out. Yeah, yes. okay. Just stay at home, stay with just the, the team and eat plenty of food, just, yeah. just rule chilled relax so i'm not able to really talk to to anyone during that time how do you how do you feel walking out for a big fight like where what's your state of mind generally because i all like i'm probably most interested about what it's like walking out to a fight than anything because i just know that i would be a fucking complete mess <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's a uh, before i used to be nerve-wracking but now i just enjoy the, the thrill of it because it is, it's crazy. To, to it's a you. weird thing. You're going to war. Yeah. And you're putting it all on the line. Yeah. Your life d determines the next half an hour. Like it's all on the line. Yeah. Yes. You could go to shit, you know, or you could go up. Yeah. And your career keeps moving forward and keeps going further and further and what you keep chasing. Mm. Um, but yeah, I like, I like, uh, I like to put on my my music. Yep. So when I come out, I usually come out with my little Mexican song. Uh, yeah. That Mexican song, um, I started listening to it in, in when I was in in Los Angeles, and it was it was my preparation for Charlo. Yeah. I was running, and my earphones are in, and I'm always running to that song. So it, it resembles for me the path towards every fight. So as soon as that that song goes on, it gets me into this happy mode where. I get flashbacks of training camps in, in LA, in Vegas, coming back home, the Tony Harrison fights, the, the Gold Coast fight when, when I was going through, it just resembles everything. And then, and then the main song goes on and it's just, a, I sort of just feel, try feel the energy and yep. race it. Yeah. And yeah. Do you like, do you like the theater of it all? I can't remember who you were fighting. Was it, it was in Sydney, you came out to Thunderstruck and you had like all the fucking fire and the flames and all that shit. Like, I think it's cool when you watch it back. Yeah. At the time, I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. It's so hot. Yeah. yeah. And you like so came hot, up and like, you were like on a stage yeah, and yeah. shit. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't like that part. <laughs> yeah. I just like to just walk through, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. run. Actually, just run. <laughs> got so much adrenaline and energy. I'm yeah. ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. Because it went for quite a while. I'm like, this is sick. But it's also like, it would be. Yeah. potentially draining oh yeah i remember those uh those fire i remember coming out and then they put me into this tunnel and i look at my grandpa i'm like i go grandpa i go put water down my face i am so hot <laughs> <laughs> that fire has nearly burnt me. <laughs> Fucking hell. Fire out. I'm, I'm ready to fight, you know? Yeah. Like, I don't need that fire in my face. <laughs> That's fucking yeah. That's the last That's fucking a, thing. Exactly. You I'm not surprised it's fucking hot. It does look hot. It, well, it looks hot, mate. But in fairness, I'm not even thinking about that. I'm just thinking about the big zoo, like zoo yeah, and fucking yeah. flames. But I'm like, yeah, you could, like, if you had longer hair, it'd catch on fire. <laughs> so, I mean, on Charlo... That week, dog. Um, mm. How how do you feel? Like that's he dropped out twice from injury. Is that yeah? Like and then now he's gone up to fight Canelo. Yeah. Second he steps in the ring, you're the, the undisputed champ. fucking WBO, WBO champ. champ. Congratulations for that. That's awesome. Yeah, but I mean, that must just be fucking frustrating. The boxing world seems like there's a bit of that that happens. How have you dealt with like the repeated setbacks of that, or like the repeated disappointment of that? Um, at first I was quite disappointed because, you know, that's the guy that I was hoping to get. Yeah. Uh, 
even if you forget about the belts, that was the man to, to get. Um, but at the same time, I don't blame him. When you, when an opportunity to fight Canelo Alvarez happens, you take it. Yep, yes. You know, doesn't matter who you are, you take it. Uh, he's a legend of the sport, and, and you know if he is the man. Mm. And if you want to be the man, you got to you got to you got to beat Canelo Alvarez to, yep. to become the man. Um, but yeah, I, I just stay focused. Given the task ahead, I knew the boys were going to figure something out. Um, yeah. When one door closes, another one opens. You know. We- were you and now, and now my name will forever be in the history books as as the WBO world champion. Yeah, hundred percent. Were you? What sort of advice were you getting when Charlo went down injured the first time? Or would he break his hand before Christmas or something? Yeah, like that? Yeah. I can't remember. Were you advised to just sit and wait for him? Because no. I remember people, at uh-huh. least the media or, yeah. or, or you know expert voices, were saying, "Fuck that, taking Tony Harrison's risky," and then taking a Campo risky. Like, yeah. how did you view that? I feel like I'm the best in the division. Yeah. So, like, I can clean them all out. <laughs> yeah. So, and again, there's no risk, no reward. Yeah. You know, in the meantime, uh, I've had two fights. The whole world now knows uh, me and what I, I bring to the table. Um, and at the same time, I've made a few bucks in the meantime. So, <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> Can't yeah. complain about that. It's all that. worked yeah. out pretty yeah. well. It also <laughs> makes the the future fight with Charlo bigger, bigger, way bigger. bigger. Yeah. Cause I think, you know, a lot of people at the time and I'm talking US media and stuff here probably didn't rate you as highly as they fucking do uh, now. Right. They're like, Oh, you know, who's Tim Zoo sort of uh, thing. Whereas nah, now, now they know. Now what's they know. Up, you know. Yeah. They know exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Was it after you knocked out of Campo that, uh, Terrence Crawford, like he tweeted about you? Yeah. He wrote uh, Monster. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And he's, and you, I think I remember you saying like, he's one of your favorite fighters yeah. and to hear him like that he was watching was quite a, yeah. I, I liked that moment because even though it sort of made you or it like showed you in a light of like still being like a fan of the sport, mm. you know what I mean? Like it's sort of, you could. You could, you wouldn't, you'd be forgiven for like playing it cool, you know what I mean? But it was kind of like a cool. It was, I liked that you were showing like sincerity there and being like, "Wow, that's that's crazy." He's watching. Yeah, for sure. Well, you know what? It's boxing fans are everywhere. You know, I was. It's funny because I was walking, I was walking in Vegas at the Caesar's Palace, and I noticed Floyd Mayweather, <laughs> and he sort of like spots me out out of nowhere, mm. and he looks at me and he like points at me and he goes, "Come here." I was like, oh, really? of course I'm coming there. <laughs> <laughs> of course Hang I'm on, coming, bro. bro. <laughs> this was before the Tony Harrison fight. And he, he recognized who I was. And I was like, you know what? Like boxing fans, even if you're up there at the very top, such as Floyd Mayweather, you're still watching, mm. you know? Even the, the last time Nikita was fighting, I was sitting next to Tyson Fury. And Tyson Fury goes, man, I like your fight against Tony Harrison. And I was tripping really? out. I was yeah, like, man. Wow. This guy is in the UK and he's watching my fight against uh, um, Tony Harrison. Wow. You know, it's, you don't know who's, who's watching. Mm. And, and um, that's the thing when you're fighting on the platform, such as Showtime in America, um, everyone's watching. Everyone's watching. What, did, what was the interaction with Floyd like? What happened? Did he-, he just spotted me out. He said, he, he recognized me and said, good luck with everything. And I just went straight away, man. Selfie, selfie. <laughs> Give me a selfie, man. Go, Thanks, bro. And uh, yeah, it was it was pretty cool. And I walked around after. I was like, man, Floyd knew me, man. Yeah, yeah. Floyd yeah. knew me. I've made it, man. Let me go do some fucking push ups. Let's go train. <laughs> Mate, not not bad, though. You got Tyson Fury, Terence Crawford, Floyd Mayweather, mm. all yeah. recognizing you. Aren't you sort of being floated as like a potential future opponent for Terence Crawford? Yeah. I've hopefully. seen you in some like, you yeah, know. Hopefully in the future we can. Is he a division above you? He's a. Below. 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 Yeah. So he'd have to, he'd come up probably? He, yeah, he'd have to come up. Yeah. You can't lose any more weight. No, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> and I don't have long left in, in this division. So mm. yeah. I'm trying to get as many big fights. Hopefully we can get the Charlo fight uh, sorted one time, one yep. day, and, and then, yeah, I'll move up. So will you, so for you, and again, I don't know in the boxing realm more specifically how much you want to disclose like what your goals are for each division, but is you, are you kind of wanting to just beat Charlo? Like, is that the goal for the division? And then you go up, like if you do that or when you do that, then you go on? Just make super fights, man. Yeah. Make mm-hmm. fights that you just wake up to and you got you can tell a story later on in the mm-hmm. future, you know? Yeah. The so stories, the highlights. Um, is, is that what drives you more yeah. than being an undisputed champ? Like yeah. Dad? 
Yeah. Yeah. Belts are belts are great, you know. They're they're little trophies. That's how I said yeah. little trophies uh, that you can put on the wall. But I don't know the highlights and and the fights that you go through and the the videos that are going to be replayed nonstop over mm. and over again. That's what that's that's what you're fighting for. Are you afraid of losing? Nah, man. You know, like again in UFC or MMA, losses aren't as hectic as they seem to be in boxing. But like, mm. is it is it something that's concerning or is it? No, I've I've never thought about losing. As a possibility, yeah, yeah, right. Because yeah, I was like, I was on your, I was on your fight history uh, today, and it looks good, all green. It just does. Well, yeah, yeah. It, looks <laughs> you know, it looks Keep it that way. It yeah. looks <laughs> nice yeah. that way. Yeah, I'll keep it that way. It, Fucking it's um, was it always that way? Like the sort of having a clean record was important. Was that is that Floyd's doing? It's not just that. It's just in everything I do, eh? Mm. Just in everything. Mm. I play a basketball game. There's no way no one's beating me in basketball. <laughs> okay, right. You know, table tennis. No one's. No one's. I'm. I'm gonna to play better. pool because we'll have to fucking. We'll pump you. Oh like, I man. Wanna, like I don't want to. Yeah, I get the shits if I lose. You know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm not that good in pool. <laughs> yeah, well, that's good. We'll pick some of this shit up. It's funny, like. <laughs> Everyone that's at the tippity top is always just super competitive. Yeah. Like we fucking flipped. We played. Um, we flipped a coin with uh, Ricky Ponting once when we interviewed him, and we beat him best out of five. <laughs> he had the shits for the rest of the interview. Oh, yeah, yeah it was just like <laughs> flipping a coin. He was like, "No, nah, do it again." We're like, "Fuck, mate. Oh, we just beat you, Ricky. Sorry, mate. <laughs> a win's a win. Win is a win." Have you always been super competitive, or is that something yeah. that you've got like has evolved over time? No, no. I've always had it. I remember once, uh, year three. I don't know how old. We are back then. Nine, year three, year nine three. years old. Yeah. Nine or eight. So I came second in cross country. <laughs> I come back home, I tell my dad, you know, I came second. And he looked at me, he goes, mate, that's not good enough, man. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, that's not good enough. Um, he made me run from year three to year four, five, five fifteen, wake up call, um, three times a week. No way. Yeah. After coming second, like Just as a result? Second. Yeah, wow. five fifteen, three times 5 15, a week. Yeah, a.m. before school. Um, How did you feel about that? Do you remember? I remember I was getting emotional running from when I, when I came second. I was I was emotional. I started having breathing problems because I was losing. Wow, really? Yeah. And then year four, year five, year six came first every time. Fuck. Did you, is part of, when you're at that age, is part of not wanting to lose because your old man's like a hard ass or, you know, to, like demands sort of I perfection? Think that's just how he was and, yeah. he, and he brought it upon us. Yes. That losing was not an option. Second place is not an achievement, mm. you mm. know? A lot of people, a lot of kids these days, they get pat on the back, well done, you've done, done very well. Yeah. I mean, it was the other way around. Came second, that's, that's not good enough. You know, there's only yeah. one, one option. So did you having having your old man be that way, and then obviously being who he was? Did you were you always box like in a box? Was it like this is what I want to do? No, nah, no. Nah. I was always in the in the gym. That's I, I guess that's where we sort of grew up. Mm. Um, but it's not what I always wanted to do. Um, they they st steered me away from from boxing because they knew what's involved. Yeah, they put me into gymnastics, soccer. All of that stuff, anything away anything from boxing. Else. But we were just in the gym. We would always, we would always know how to fight. That's mm. just what we did. You know, we had our mm. first little exhibitions when we were like, I don't know, eight years old, seven years old. I didn't steer you that far away from it. If you don't exhibitions <laughs> yeah, yeah. at eight years old, <laughs> we weren't fighting, but we were just having exhibitions yeah. in the gym, always sparring and stuff. And then we had our, I had my first fight. I don't know, fourteen. I remember like you being spoken about when you were like 14 and then like the footage on sort of the sports things of you training yeah. and fighting and shit was that because that's also a pressure that like most fighters don't have no one knows the fuck they are until they're yeah. someone right yeah that must have added i assume a level of pressure on you for sure yeah expectation at a at a young age you know it's not needed at that young age mm. but i was i was able to to handle it was that easy to handle or is that something you're just taking I mean, in your stride or um, have, you, have you struggled with it at times? No, I think I was fine with it because hmm. I've always sort of just, uh, I didn't let anyone, I didn't let the expectations get to me. Hmm. You know, I just always did my own thing. Uh, always did it for myself and that yep. was the main thing.
Yeah, because it's it's interesting with like with sports stars that have done well at anything. Uh, I at, at least immediately look look to their sons, right? Like when I David Beckham, when I heard his son played soccer, I'm like, fuck, I wonder how good he is. You know, you look into it, mm. and more often than not, in fact, almost all the ways they they don't really turn out to be anything. So yeah. for you to become a world champion, you or know at what? least interim is, think, is crazy. I think it's the way the parents raise you. Yeah, usually when. Um, famous fathers and successful dads, they usually uh, spoil their kids, mm. you know, and I guess we weren't spoiled with that type of stuff, me and my brother. We were just, we were, I guess we, I could say we were, my dad was a rock star back in the days and I, and I sort of could see it. And I, I, I was still young then, but I could see it. Everyone recognized him and he had the Bentleys and the mansion all that he had all of that stuff but we lived in a soviet union type system where you know it was the training had to be 100 percent. it was like the michael jordan mentality yeah you know that's that's the way we lived throughout our whole childhood and that's all we knew so it was it was it was different it's all about how you're raised i guess that's interesting it is was interesting. that over was it overwhelming living well, you probably didn't know any differently, but was there you times know. where you're like, fuck, like I, I don't really want to get up at 5.15 a.m. in course. year five and go for a jog, you of know? Of course, of course. <laughs> That's the last thing I wanted to do at times, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But it was just just brought into us. Yeah. It was just, uh, yeah, it just created habits. Like even now, I can't sit still. Even when I go on holidays, I, um, I can't sit still. It's just part of us. You got to train, you got to do yeah, something. I got to do something. Really? Keep myself <clears throat> active, yeah. Well, I don't suffer. No, I might need to get Kostya into our house just to fucking <laughs> We'd get be in the shape. Oh, we'd geez. be fucking. Imagine we'd we have had... six packs pretty quick. Man. Yeah, we would. We would. Yeah. We'd be jacked. What's the difference between like having the old man be the old man and then like, you know, giving your boxing advice? Like, are you now at a point where obviously, you know, he, you'd be silly not to to take on, to, to listen to him to some degree, but is there a part of it where it's like, fuck off dad, like I've got this, you know, at any point where like he's uh, maybe telling you what to do? A lot of times actually, yeah. Yeah. especially the older you get, it's just like dad sometimes forgets, you know, he's just, I guess I, I respect what he's done, of course. Yes. Um, but I am, we're in a different era now, you know, mm. we do things differently. Yep. He mm. says one thing at times, I'm like, Nah, I'm not doing that. I'm gonna do it my way. <laughs> yeah. He's like, nah, man, you can't do it that way. I'm like, man, I'm doing it my way. <laughs> you, know? you haven't lived here for what 20 years, Dad. It's all good, man. I got yeah. it figured. Don't yeah. worry about it. <laughs> yeah. So, funny. but I respect. I respect, of course, his opinion. He's uh, what he's gone through and what he's done. I guess there's there's not gonna be anyone in Australia able to do that. Yeah. Does he get back here ever or not? No, he hasn't been back for a long time. Do you go over there? I used to go over there. Uh, since it, everything that's been happening yeah. politically right now, it's yeah. it's a bit bit tough. Yeah, not the ideal time to travel no, over there. No, no. How is it over there? How do you in, do? You, do you have? I assume like lots of family over there. Yeah, well, my mom's family's still there. Okay, they right. still live in that small little town. What's the uh, town? Serov. Serov. Ural Mountains. It's it's like a factory town. So small little town. Yeah. Uh, some of the some of the photos and videos I've seen it's 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 pretty crazy you know that that we were supposed to be there we were supposed to be brought up in mm. in that environment and where we are living at now it's 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 unbelievable wow. in Australia yeah it's crazy crazy two complete opposite parts of the world um, I remember parents telling me about the Soviet Union days you know like each family would have a certain amount of chicken you know there was there was no shortages. Um, right there was no oversupply this is what this is all you got everyone was equal you know it was completely different wild coca-cola the first time my parents saw coca-cola Coca was uh, 20 years old when they first came here to australia how'd they get it like was it they they have to like run away to get here or no what my dad it? my dad uh got a contract here in australia uh and was able to move okay, as a right. professional boxer hectic yeah Interesting. Wild. Isn't that wild? It's sliding doors, huh? Yeah. Pretty crazy. Yeah, that's fucking crazy. That's fucking um, unbelievable. <laughs> so can you what do we need to know about this Mendoza guy? Who you're obviously mm. you're about to when people listen to this. Yeah, yeah. You'll be fucking gearing up for it. I think maybe even a week out. 
Yeah, yeah. So he's the interim WBC. Yeah, the well, he'd be, will that be up for grabs when you're fighting? Well, because because I'm the full champ, I can't fight for the interim belt. It has to be the full title. That's so. what I mean. So, like, will they be doing the same thing that the – Oh, I don't think so. No. I don't think so from, from what I've heard. Why is that? Um, not sure. Yeah, okay. Um, WBC – I don't know. They haven't considered him as the mandatory yet, so I don't know. It's a lot of politics involved. It's, yeah, it's hard to follow sometimes. Right, yeah. though, it yeah. is very difficult to follow. Yeah, and it's boxing is very unstable. There's so many different keys and factors that play a part. Mm. It's not like rugby. You got a week every week. You got a game. Mm. You know who you're playing against. You know where you're playing against. Um, there's a schedule. Yes. Boxing there. There's no schedule. You know, one day you're here, one day you're there. It's just all over the place. And also the fact that there's different belts who are sanctioned by different sort of yeah. businesses or organisations and they don't really align and they don't speak to each other and yeah. you're not forced to fight people. You sort of are, but you're not really. And yeah. it's it's a fucking wild yeah, yeah, world. It's a that wild world. <laughs> wild world. Yeah. But so Mendoza is like, what's his go? What's his racket? He's tough, yep. uh, skillful. Um He's got two big, big upsets in his last two fights. He's uh, produced two big, big knockouts. So he's got heavy hands, uh, good power, uh, which is always, you know, always dangerous when you fight someone like that. But yeah, nothing, nothing. I'm overwhelmed about. <laughs> you don't seem too worried. No, no you don't. You don't <laughs> I'm just terrible. chilled, man. I'm just chilled. <laughs> and uh, can, like, can we talk about where that'll be taking place or not? Not this. I'm not stage? too sure yet. Okay, not too sure. I think I was. It's either it's either going to be in Melbourne or Gold Coast again. Is That's that, what I've been heard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so they, have, they haven't again, figured it out yet. You'd hope it's been fucking figured out by the time this comes out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. So Mendo, and that's in October. Fuck, I didn't have the date. October fifteen. Yeah, October fifteen. Um, I wanted to ask you about um, uh, Michael Zarafa. Yeah. <laughs> there we go <laughs> so like he obviously there was a fight very close to happening during COVID he pulled out uh, shit show yeah. absolute shit show who was it that stepped was it Stevie Sparks that stepped into yeah. that one yeah. um, wouldn't what, get on the private plane or something yeah, what, 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 wasn't like, that the, the go man I, they pulled every ex excuse in the book but it's kind of shocking. Like, was it? Do you think that in that he really was just like didn't want to do it? Like, was he just bitching out or like? I I really don't know. I really don't know. Um, I think it's probably involved with his camp, with his team, right? Um, I'm not too sure because I f I feel like that's a shit guy, you know? Yeah, mm. well, especially so when you're to playing. That. Yeah, you you're a week out from the fight. Yeah, and the fact that you've been talking smack and all that's left to do is is just to rock up and fight. I came there. I was in Newcastle waiting for him. Mm. The fight was there. Yeah. And then what are you? COVID restrictions. There was no COVID restrictions nah. anyway. No. Nah. And I left because Sydney was starting to get locked down. But Newcastle was sweet. Mm. And, he, and he had no excuse to come there and then back without no problem. Mm. It's and sort of – it's in some ways sort of ruined his career a little bit, hasn't it? Well, it certainly like fight. stained him, right, from like a – at least from a public perception sense. But like, again, obviously a fight with you, which, you know, as a per personal friend that you are now, we, you know, you would have beaten him comfortably. But like he certainly seems to have like roadblocked himself a little bit. Yeah, he stuffed that? himself. Yeah. yeah. He stuffed himself. Because he's obviously not getting the, the respect from the, the fans, first mm. of all. Um there's bringing entertainment to the sport like Conor McGregor or there's just being an absolute douchebag and everyone hates you. Mm. And that's Michael Zarafa. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's that's the truth. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the truth of, of how it is. And um, he had one thing to do and that was to rock up and he didn't rock up. Well, I had a three-month prep, uh, did plenty of sparring all around Australia uh, plenty of money spent bringing different sparring partners and stuff like that, logistically, all of that stuff, you know. And for him to just uh, pull out a week, that's just I find that disrespectful. And you don't get second chances like that. Mm. How did you react when you heard the news? I was I thought it was a joke at first. Yeah, you know, a week out, I was like, Nah, man, you guys, you guys fucking around, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. And pull then, my leg. Yeah, yeah. But now I'm sort of used to it. Charlo's done the same thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're seriously. all starting to. They're all fucking around. Breaking a pinky. <laughs> 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 well, mate, how's your arm? 
It was. It was that all a. Was that way more of a beat up than? Oh, the, what, the dog bite. The dog bite. Like yeah. I saw a photo. It looked pretty. Fu- what sort of dog was that? It was a Staffy. Yeah. Staffies will do that to you. Well, yeah, they can yeah. do that to you. They don't mind a punch on Staffies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm pretty scared now with dogs, eh? As soon as like a dog comes to me, I'm like, man, yeah, get the fuck away from get, here. Get yeah. it out. Well, of you can't. Time. You got to get the prize possessions away from the dogs, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I was, I was lucky, man. I could have gone here, like to a vein, to an artery. Uh, yeah. Got me right here. Which were you crazy. in that moment are you like oh wait like are you are you thinking fight straight away like holy fuck or are you just a bit like wait what's going on? like what happened how do you get a dog you must have pissed this thing off <laughs> man I, I just went to pat it and the thing just jumped on me straight away and then i sort of just backed off like that and that's when he got me and then i went inside and i, I could see my i could see a bit of blood in the skin and i just grabbed my skin and just like held it together <laughs> I'm like, man, take me to the hospital. I need to get this stitched up. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, when I saw it, I was like, all right, this is big. At the time, I was a bit in, a bit in panic. I was like, all right, I don't know, don't know how we're going to go with the fight. Um, hopefully, it stitches up and it'll be sweet. Because it's also a fucked story to like, like if you broke your hand sparring or something, that's one thing, but it's yeah, like, oh, I got bitten by a dog yeah. in the week leading up to fight. You're just yeah. like, oh, Jesus. And I'm on the hospital bed going into surgery because I needed, I needed to go under anesthetic to get this whole thing stitched up. And um, Oh, you went under? Yeah, I went under. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, because, yeah, they needed to clean it out and stitch inside and then stitch outside and make sure it's all clean or else, man, infections could can happen like that. Oh, yeah. 100%. I'm, I'm, I'm in this uh, bed where they're rolling me in someone's watching the footy and I hear my ad go up, Tim Zhu fighting Carlos Ocampo, like oh. the, the Fox Sports ad. <laughs> yeah. And I just look, I look at the um, the guy that's ro- uh, reeling me in, the nurse that was reeling me in, I'm like, Tim Zhu ain't fighting Carlos Ocampo <laughs> right now. <laughs> oh, I'm fuck. going into surgery. That's <laughs> what I'm doing. What you, yeah. <laughs> and no one knew about it, you know? So yeah. it, was, it was all hush hush. I was in a private room. I was real low key because I didn't want this spreading in the media. No, you know? I was like, man, this is three three weeks out exactly from the fight. <laughs> you know, three weeks exactly from the fight. Um, I can't have any this getting out. any news getting out. Yeah. Do how do you handle that? Do you have to like do you call the No Limit Boys and say I've just been bitten by a fucking dog? No, I didn't call <laughs> no one. Oh, really? No, I called my doctor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I called my manager. And everyone's in panic mode then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, everyone's like, oh shit, what's yeah. happening? Get in my private room, make sure everything's <laughs> sorted. Um, yeah, but I was lucky to get go into surgery straight away. And I remember coming back home at night, 12 o'clock. And, you know, when you're under general anesthetic, you're on the, the heavy painkillers, you're zoned out. Yeah. It's just a, a weird place to be in three weeks before the fight. Because three weeks before the fight, usually you're locked in. You're mm. in terminator mode. You're ready to go. You're ready to, yeah. to hurt someone. Mm. And yeah, it was a different, yeah, different feel. <laughs> I was going to say, how'd you get the private room organised? You'd usually be sitting in an AR with the other punters. <laughs> yeah, like. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, everyone around me was all these drugos. <laughs> they were overdosing. It was in St. Vincent's. Yeah, oh, I shit. was like, oh man, this is not where I want to well, be. At least it's more like, you know, there's some junkies. Like, oh, I fucking saw Tim Zoo in the bloody room. It's like, yeah, right, I dickhead. I right, bet you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure you did, mate. <laughs> I remember one of the blokes I was cleaning out, he's like, hands are shaking. He's like, doesn't want to <laughs> yeah. stuff it up. Do not fuck this up. Do not fuck this up. Don't you fuck this, mate. Yeah, I got to fight in three weeks, man. I go, you got to. We got to do a good sure job you're here. fixing this up. <laughs> fuck yeah, no, you got to keep. You got to keep you around, just like golden retrievers and shit. Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. Real yeah. Chill well, maybe just no dogs in the lab. No later. dogs at all. Yeah, yeah. I've got a dog myself, but he's got? a little Frenchy. He's a little. Oh yeah, no, they're not going to do it. Yeah, ain't dogs, no, alright. Yeah, he's good. Yeah, he's good. <laughs> what's um. What's it like having Nikita going around? Like he's, it's funny, I didn't know until obviously he came into the sort of no limit stable and started yeah. fighting, but like, and with the utmost respect to him, didn't even know about Nikita, yeah, yeah. which I guess is probably his to his benefit from having you sort of in the limelight. What's it like having, he's a fucking animal, dude. The Butch. The butch. We're, we're big Butch. We're big butch, butch guys. Yeah, yeah. he's yeah. a fucking, he's a <laughs> weapon. Butch yeah. guys. What's it like having him coming through? That must be kind of like a, again, now you're on the family side of it. Are you are you a little more cold in that you like it's in the boxing world? Or is it's it hard? hard to watch. It's hard to watch because uh, now I understand my family and what they go through. Yeah, it's nerve wracking, man. It's nerve wracking, and um, I've I've loved his progression. I mm. uh, remember when he when he just started and to what he is now. He's he's uh, he's a different 
the confidence is different. He's, yeah. he's, he's maturing into himself. Even the way he speaks, I feel like just from the outside perspective, he seems more comfortable in the 100%. media. Imagine he was, he was an architect. Yeah. Yeah. That's he was I drinking think. his red wine at night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was, he was staying up all night, two nights. I remember three, two, three nights in a row, just nonstop studying and doing his, uh, artworks and drawing pictures or whatever he used to do and he had this red wine he used to sit like this <laughs> well, he's like this red wine yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um drawing his pictures and um from that to like not speaking to no one to like complete opposite you're in a room fox sports press conference mm. nikita zoo mm. on the the headline first pro fight yeah so it's of course it's a intimidating and shocking moment yeah does he come to you and go like, I'm actually, I want to come back into boxing? Like, how did he sort of, man, I could, how did he, when did he put the red wine down, uncross his legs and I start see, fucking I being see. an animal? Because he's always been like a, a low key kid. Um, he's never wanted a lot of attention on him. Mm -hmm. um, but I wanted to, I wanted him to feel, because I could see him started to get in the ring, uh, in training, I could see maybe a year before he turned pro that he's starting to train and he's starting to do stuff and, I could see Igor seeing, put him on the pads for like a couple of rounds and see how he's like. And and then I said to him, Nikita, I go, come out, come out. As soon as the fight finished with Dennis Hogan, I said, come out to the ring to let him feel it. And then I think as soon as he felt that, he knew straight away. He's hooked. Architecture can go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That you can way. come back to this <laughs> if you want yeah, to. I want to pursue boxing. Yeah. He's got some serious, serious power. Like, do you... Do you think that's his most valuable strength? Like at the moment, is just his ability to fucking knock people out. Aggression. He's got a crazy aggression. aggression. Yeah. But now it's becoming controlled aggression. Mm. I could see before it was just pure, like a pit bull that blow. Mm. You know, just yeah. as soon as you see his blood, knives. <laughs> just, that's, that's it. You know, even back in the days, he used to do this stupid thing, like you know when they they do uh, the knife one. in the hand oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. this guy thought it was a competition how about how quick you can go you know I remember him having cuts and everything <laughs> he used to love all that type of stuff right. you know and that's just he's always been tapped like that in the head. <laughs> yeah. so it's a little bit like I'm a screw yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I like the butcher for him then yeah, yeah. it's starting to make a lot of perfect. sense yeah, fucking yeah. Terrifying you, I butcher. think I heard was it him or you potentially um, when he fought on your Sydney car I think the Tony Harrison fight that you, you wouldn't, you don't want to fight on each other's cards again. It's just too stressful emotionally. For him, I don't know. For me, it was all right because I didn't get to watch it. Yeah, but for him, <laughs> yes, him. it was all right for yeah. me. I was in, I was in my van, like driving to the fights, and I didn't watch Nikita. And then I come out, and Nikita's already won the fight. But I think for him, yeah, I don't think he, <laughs> he enjoyed he didn't it. Enjoy no. it too much. No. Is it a similar thing with the like advice? I think. Do you give him much advice, or do you guys kind of let each other do? Yeah, I try to give him a little bit, but sometimes I don't want to like. Be like my dad. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. 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 I don't like yeah. to be exactly. like my dad. Yeah. So I consider, I always put that into consideration. But I always say, man, you should just do this, man, if you want. This is how I, I, I usually say, this is how I feel better. Uh, this is what I do. I go, but see how you feel. Yeah. Obviously, when we're doing this, he's fighting Brubaker uh, next Wednesday. Yeah. How do you think that'll go? I think Nikita will smack him. Smack him, mate. Yeah. yeah. That Brubaker's been around for a minute, hasn't he? Like he sort of, and he went, he was out a few years out. Came back. You 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 knocked him, didn't you? Mm. Stopped him. Stopped him. And Nikita wants to try and beat you by a round yeah, or something. Yeah, shit. I reckon he will. <laughs> reckon he will? <laughs> Look, I think there are different paths. Uh, yeah. Rubak has got a kid, family. He's nice and relaxed. You know, he, he's a cowboy. He's got his long hair. He's yeah. living. He's living a, a good type of life. Yeah. You know? Nikita, on the other hand, he's tapped. He's hungry. He's young. Uh, the blokes in Thailand eating king cobra hearts. What yeah, is he? Cobra hearts and drinking their blood. What the <laughs> fuck? He's just, he's, the mentality is different. <laughs> yeah, you know? dude. <laughs> what do you well, talk me through that? God. Yeah, yeah. You're going terrifying. Two, when you got two people like that, <laughs> what are the chances? Who's going to win? You reckon? <laughs> well, I reckon the bloke eating king cobra <laughs> hearts. Exactly. Yeah. What? Exactly. Talk me through the king cobra heart thing. What's what's? Well, that they about? found that it. it's. Uh, I've, 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 I would love to do it as well because my dad did it when we were in Thailand. And me and Nikita both watched it back when we were young. Um, but when he went to Thailand recently, he did it. And um, 
the reason for it is that when you prepare for battle, you have to have you, you people used to eat the king cobra's heart to to feel that king cobra in them and drink the blood. Oh my god! Yeah, that's and Nikita's, Nikita's done that, and he said he felt this. Uh, he said uh, he f- you feel this energy, <laughs> really crazy energy. And he's oh on, apparently, he's on the flight back home, and he could feel this energy from the king cobra. <laughs> <laughs> Starts biting. Yeah. Oh, feel that. <laughs> <laughs> wow yeah that's cool yeah, oh, i terrifying. like that i'll it's give it scary. i'm gonna give it a go next time i go to thailand i just didn't know about it i forgot all about it where do you yeah. go to, f- to to get your hands on some king cobra heart like you gotta go looking that shit out right oh, it's just- a proper a proper place oh so you can just do that if you're over there there's a place that doesn't man there's a place really that yeah and you 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 tease the snake it's like an aquarium you tease the snake so it's just popping out all this venom and then one of the guys grabs it um just rips the um, skin off first and then gets the heart. And Nikita said the heart was still beating. When you eat it. When he ate it. Yeah. Is that oh. is it a like is it a one is oh. it a one mouthful sort of operation or is he have to He said he chewed on it as well. <laughs> oh, oh, did he? I go, bro. Oh, he's a I different... go, man, I'll I'll swallow the thing, but I'm yeah. not chewing on <laughs> oh, it. Oh, <laughs> cobra heart. I tell you oh. what. Whoa. <laughs> Mate, uh, Anthony Bourdain has eaten a King Cobra Heart. Really? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so it's a thing the King Cobra Heart is it's the warrior mentality apparently. All right. Yeah. All right, maybe we need to get our hands on some Eddie. <laughs> you and I? Yeah. Yeah. Well, fuck if it's good enough for Nikita <laughs> and Kasha, that's good enough for me. Shit, that is. What do we What do we do that before? Well, yeah, I mean, it has to. I mean, we don't have any. Four Oz Tag Division <laughs> Three on a fucking Wednesday night. Go there and play the game of my life. Right? Throwing up everywhere. <laughs> Got oh. that King Cobra in me, bro. Fuck me, dad. That is. That's mental. wild stuff. But good knowledge. Yeah, good knowledge. Yeah. That's that's that's. that's knowledge, I'm going to use Cobra. that. Yeah, I'll be taking that into my. Uh, but also considerations next week. Yeah, next week. <laughs> next Wednesday yeah, night. That's right. Um, um, so, uh, Dave was telling us that you're potentially well. Like, obviously, you got a uh, you've got your fight uh, on October 15. But then, like, you would like to try and line up a fight in Vegas when NRL's over there. Yeah, we'll, is that, s- we'll see how it goes. Yes, we'll see how it goes. Um, is that just somewhere someone's almost asked you that question and then? No, it's like, it's it's it's, uh, it's in the talks. Mm. Uh, we'll see what happens. But I th- this this will be probably my last fight here in Australia. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, that would be our preference. Because we're going to be in Vegas, in Vegas that for weekend. that. So it'd be nice to also yeah, be able yeah. to get in a- It'd be really nice. Get yeah. in a Tim Zoo biff. Yeah. Um, we, we've we noticed, and I don't- you, this is, It's great to have you to at least answer for yourself, that you've got, you've got yourself into a habit of wearing multiple NRL jerseys uh, in some photo opportunities. And like, I'm not- like we're Manly Seagulls fans, and I've seen you down. I've seen you in a photo with a few seagulls. I've seen you in a photo with a couple of sharks. Maybe a sharks jersey on. You know, Rabbitohs jersey one day. Like, I mean, what's what's going on here? Yeah, man. In all honesty, I'm a Bunnies fan. You're a Bunnies man. Yeah. Bunnies in New South Wales. Okay. Well, that's yeah. good. Well, yeah. New it's South half Wales good. Is good. It's half yeah. good. Yeah. So what's why are you wearing a sharks jersey? Why are you Manly Seagulls? Like, I mean, if if someone can't ask me to come down and like wear a sharks jersey, I'll be like, go fuck yourself. Man, I, I said that to my media manager. He's like, nah, man, this is, this is for the fight. <laughs> man, I go for the bunnies, bro. I go, people are paying me out now, man. I go, this is not right. I go, I'm humiliating myself. <laughs> he goes, nah, nah, trust me, trust me. More pay per view buys. <laughs> oh, man. That's fucking funny. Well, maybe. Yeah, so you're a bunnies, man. Yeah. Do you ever get, do you, do you, uh, well, I mean, games. assume you have trail. Like, there's a few of those bunnies boys with no limit. Yeah, hey? Cody Walker's with them. Yeah, the trail. Jack White and coming next yes, year. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's gonna be a good team. It will be a good team. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you're already a good fucking yeah, already, team. Already. But you're yeah. right. It'll be even better. Yeah. Um, mate. I mean, I don't have any other questions. Ed, do you got anything else that you wanted to? <sighs> mate, it's been good yarn. Though. It's been great it's been to have you, man. It's been good to hear. It's been I've good yarn. It, yeah. I've enjoyed um, it. Good luck on October 15. Um, look forward to the win and then look forward to seeing you in Vegas. Yeah, looking at yeah, the, hopefully, yeah. hopefully yeah. see you guys there. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Mate, Ooh, listen, yeah. if you're there, you'll yeah. see us there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you'll see us there. <laughs> um, yeah, mate, thanks a lot. Good luck with it all. No, thank you. Thanks, mate. Beauty. Could you two just not talk anymore? <laughs>